And welcome everybody here in Twitch Chats and everybody on YouTube for some mono red aggro. We're going to be playing this deck in best of one. This was a donation deck. That's the two Ds over here. And I guess that's what this means. Best of one. It's not boy. <laughs> Maybe it is boy. Who knows? It's best of one. Um, but yeah, we're going with some mono red aggro. So a classic 21 land aggro deck and a bunch of sweet red spells, including a lot of burn spells. You can see here we're going with Robber of the Rich. This is definitely a fun card to play. Going with Risk Factors. Going kind of old school Guilds of Ravnica Risk Factor in here. Both, basically everything costing one through three. Just a couple of Tor Brands up the top. No Frenzies. There is a sideboard here. Because um, like the deck is designed for best of three or you know has a sideboard if, if you want to play it at fnm or anything like that or you know if you like playing best of three there is a sideboard over here we're just doing best of one today though with all of our decks except for the is it flash donation deck that we're going to play next because with how my as you as y'all know my computer's kind of struggling right now and so i think best of one is going to um alleviate lag issues because the games are just a lot faster and speaking of faster games mono red aggro definitely helps with that I, I like having all the Bone Crusher Giants. It's just a really strong card, being a good two for one, helping you play a little bit of a longer game there in Mono Red. Um, yeah, Storm, Mono Red. Yeah, this is Kendis's deck. Got you one of your favorites there, Storm. So, yeah, let's go ahead and give this a try. I think a, a spicy sideboard card is Immolation Shaman, which I didn't really think of at all. The, the other day, somebody asked about this card. This is a pretty spicy one against the Cauldron Familiar decks with all their Witches Ovens. Because it's whenever an opponent activates an ability of an artifact, creature, or land that isn't a mana ability deals one damage to that player. So if they activate Witches Oven, take one. If they use Cauldron Familiar's ability in the graveyard, does that count? I would assume that would count, because that's a creature. So I would assume that would count, like the Cauldron Familiar ability in the graveyard, um, to come back into play. Take one. Yeah, that's an activated ability. So um, if you want the goose to make a food, take one. And, you know, just that those ones just kind of add up. So it's that's a pretty cool little um, sideboard card for those matchups. Unfortunately, it's not triggered abilities of enchantments. You don't get the, um, the trail of crumbs. But all the lands also, all these castles that have these activated abilities... Um, it's not so if you're kind of confused i know a lot of people get conf, you know, confused and ask what does it mean that isn't a mana ability a mana ability is something that adds mana so if you look at castle Embreth here the first thing tap add a red that's a mana ability so you don't take any damage for doing tap add a red that's what mountains do by the way they tap add a red you don't take any damage for that but the bottom ability the three and a, the one red red tap that's not a mana ability it doesn't mean that just because there's a mana cost to the ability but the ability is that it add that your creatures get plus one plus zero that ability does not have any um adding of mana going on uh runaway steamkin this is an, a mana ability see the abilities you remove the three counters and then add red 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 that's adding red mana so basically that those are things that are mana abilities things that add mana to your mana pool anyway Let's go ahead and play some games with best of one. We're just going to play it in ranked. It's the easy way to do it so we can play as many games as we want. Yep, so it's any ability that adds mana to your mana pool. All right, anyway, welcome everybody who's, who's just joining in. Hope y'all are having a good Sunday afternoon, evening, morning, wherever you're at. Maybe it's Monday. Who knows? Maybe it's Thursday night. Who knows? Ooh, mono red mirror? Looks like a mono red mirror. Yeah, give me that Tor Brand. Give me that Tor Brand. A 
Well, at least the Torbrand's gone. It got exiled. Yeah, the Orzhov sacrifice, it has Witch's Oven and um, Priest of Forgotten Gods as sacrifice cards. So I went to attack first and just see what I got like off of the robber of the rich, and that's why I had the full, um, the full control on because I didn't want them just to block right away. So I wanted to see what I grabbed from robber of the rich. So my best, my opponent's best play is probably just playing like the bone crusher giant to trade with mine, but they have to, they have to kill the robber of the rich because if they don't, oh gosh, if they don't, this is trouble for them. Because I get a Torbrand. They do get to kill my robber. But I get a Torbrand. I could have just gone Steamkin, Light Up, Light Up, and so on, but... Huh. All these bone crusher giants. Yeah, that, that's what I was I was kind of checking that first, but no, so yeah. We cast it, we exile it. Yeah, that would be bad if they exile it. Well, they're... If they target the Bone Crusher Giant, they take two and lose. So they have to block it. Yeah, we got our afternoon stream today, so it's, it's all sunny outside. And so that's why the lighting's all kind of messed up. Um, take one. Okay. Good turn, good turn. Very good turn. Let's see if we find something that does one point of damage. Not yet. One point of damage. One point of damage. If we didn't hit something there, I was probably going to be casting the Bone Crusher Giant. Oh, yeah. I was like, towards the end of that game, because I knew we were going to be winning that game, but towards the end of the game, I, I was just, kind of, last, last like two turns, I was kind of thinking about what I was going to be doing with sideboarding. <laughs> but it's best of one. So that's it. Ooh, we got a pack. Oh, it's Sunday level up day. Let's get, let's go. All right, how, ooh, we get the rare Fey Fox up next. So that's one, two, three, four. Ugh, I'm still a long ways away from the fourth orb. Whoa, those magic mirror sleeves look sweet. All right, anyway, we got a pack. We're cracking it open, hoping to get a, a mythic wild card. Darn, 20 gems.
Yeah, there's no life gain in this deck. Yep, it's per pure aggro. Yep. I don't know if this is really that great of a keep with no one drop. But we're on the play, so we still get to play the Rimrock Knight on turn two. Another mirror. Yeah, this is a pretty meh hand. Yeah. It's not one I was excited about. Remove these tops. The problem with using the slaying fire here, which is what I want to do, but the problem with that is they could have a tour brand and then I cannot kill a tour brand. Oh. Good job, Capitan. Ah, Gruel deck. Well, that's good. No Domer's ambush. Speaking of Domri's ambush, wow, they just took it. It's pretty risky to cast light of the stage here, but I really want to cast light of the stage, hit a land drop, and then ambush. But we're already in a great spot. I think I'll just do this. Should make it pretty hard to kill this Tor brand now. trigger. There's no way they take that, right? Easy peasy. Just basically want to make sure the damage went through and nothing nothing crazy happened. I don't know what what would, but I just want to make sure the damage went through. And then after it did, you know, they're at four. That thing does four. The game's over. Yes, I could have done more damage if I would have cast stuff beforehand, but oh well. 
<laughs> burn to the face. Can't get any better than that. I know, it's just a a classic. Classic. Hey, Thrice, going very well. Oh, man. I want to keep it because a double Fervent Champion makes me want to keep it. Sure, we'll give it a try. We're on the draw. We got to draw a mountain. Come on, Goblin, give me a mountain. Not a shock. Give me a mountain. They got enough mountains. Can we have a mountain? You have too many. We need to rob the rich of all their their land. Uh. Gotta hit mountains. Oh. What's going on? Mountain! Woo! Close enough. That was a close one. Well, I guess I just cast this Bone Crusher Giant so we don't waste it. Why don't they just kill that on my turn? They knew I was casting this thing, right? Now oh, we just got their Bone Crusher Giant out of here. That's big. Uh, stop costing two everything. I mean, Steamkin would definitely just die if I if I would have just played the Steamkin the last turn. It was gonna die, for sure. Like, th like they're not doing anything else. What do you think they have in their hand? They have they're gonna have removal spells. So might as well, you know, <clears throat> play for a longer game. Kill that thing that was attacking me. That's a couple of great trades for me. Slaying Fire is obviously an incredibly valuable burn spell. Get out of here, champion. Probably going Steamkin next turn. Hoping to draw a land, being able to go like Steamkin Robber. May just go Risk Factor next turn, I guess. But basically, I want to just lead with these. If they have like burn spells, kill, this, kill these things. And then these stay alive. That's kind of the goal. They let him attack. Wow, yeah, they're just sitting on a bunch of slaying fires. Man, that hurts. Oh. 
There's no way they take the four, right? Ugh. Still no land? This is going to discard the Rimrock Knight. The whole bone crush my own creatures, so they and then they don't get to keep their bone crusher anymore. That plan has, that play has really worked out for us. And these mono red mirrors, that's something to watch out for if if you weren't, if you weren't really too, or if you didn't really see see those lines. It's something definitely to watch out for. If they're bone crushing your creature, your creature's gonna die anyway. Then you should. Like, if they're stomping it, you should just stomp your own creatures, their Bone Crusher Giants, out of there. I guess I didn't quite check. Did they scry that to the top? I hope so. Tor brand time. Attack. So they should be blocking the Rimrock Knight. That's fine. Well, that's... Looks like that's lethal. They can block one. So then they take... Take eight. Alright, it's so mono red looking good. Four and O. Oh. So fast. Twenty three minutes. Four and O. Oh. The thir first three minutes was probably me talking. Robber of the Rich has looked really good so far. Ooh, I like it. Do I get to be on the play? Yay. Scorch Spitter. <laughs> That's our third third mono red mirror. Yeah, all all sixty cards in our deck are are um have the card styles. They're all or you know, if you want to call them foil. So yeah, the whole deck is. So that's good. Yeah, so many mirrors.
That was a great draw step. Yay, they gotta land. Um let's see, do I want Yeah, we just play this. Certainly consider playing risk factors here. I mean obviously that, that was my only other option and I was thinking, so obviously I was considering that. This doesn't look great. Tor brand's real good. Uh, this thing, this thing's a three-one because of Torbrand. So I added two-two, but I didn't, I didn't block it because it's a three-one. That was just a great draw. I mean, really, just any spell was a good draw, honestly. I'm really glad they attacked with the Tor brand and we got to trade. Now all their creatures aren't lethal. Ouch, ouch. The reason why they got the slide up the stage is because they got the slide up the stage earlier. Yeah, they didn't get it there because I didn't have any cards in hand. They got just got it earlier. Well, we almost came back. The risk factors did help us.
do a lot of damage, but didn't affect the battlefield. And that's the thing about that mirror. Risk factor is good in other matchups, but not really that great in the mirror because you got to affect the battlefield with everything. So we, we finally lost a mirror. Makes, you know, makes sense. We're not going to win all of them. Still going two and one is just fine. Yeah, that was a good, good game there. Castle Vantress? I thought about just casting the Shock, but the reason why I would have cast Shock right there if I if I didn't have Steamkin in hand. But with having Steamkin in hand, I want to just save the Shock to be able to be a one-mana thing to put a counter on the Steamkin. Hmm. I guess they're Esper Control. Hey, welcome back for 11 months now, Tree Fitty. I guess I should have played the Fervent Champion first. I would have exiled one more card, but whatever. a fight you can win. No, I am not making this up as I go. Sure seems like it. Just how much do how much more do I want to commit to a sweeper? I don't know. I want to light up the stage to try to hit lands. Yeah, into the God Eternals definitely hurt there for sure. It doesn't leave me with confidence that they have a sweeper if they would if they just murderous ridered the that thing. So we'll just play the Torbrand that basically has four haste. You know, that's basically like a four power haste creature by playing Torbrand here because the fervent champions each dealt two more damage. So that's a this is a good time to play the Torbrand as it's a, a four power haste creature. Mm-hmm. 
I don't know. Maybe I should just attack out. I should have just attacked out. Yeah, that was a bad attack. That was a bad attack. I should have attacked out. Because if I attacked out, it was lethal no matter how they blocked with the shock. That was that was just bad. I yeah. Oh well. All right, five and one. See, lag problems go away if we just play games that just, well, they go away some if we just play games the last five minutes. We played against Esper, so the game lasted a little longer. But yeah, still got there. We still had tons and tons of stuff in hand. It, we were fine, but I gave my opponent another turn when they didn't need one. Or I didn't need to give them another one. Yeah, that last match, because, yeah, that last match took longer, but the other match has been doing better. Hey, QQ, good afternoon. I know, I can't wait either to have, like, a nice good fast PC that's not lagging ever. Oh man, it's gonna be awesome. Bad goose. Stop. Alright, if they get two of their Throne of Eldraine, rare, one drop. Then I guess it's fair that I get two of my Throne of Eldraine, rare, one drop. Uh, this PC is about three and a half years old. I'm just gonna risk factor here. Put them down to eight. That's a good card. Alright, maybe I should have split the stage up. Now I don't have good attacks, that's why. Well, for now. Just got two cards. Oh, that's a good one. Alright. I, I regret not casting light at the stage previously. They can block one of these two with a Wicked Wolf and sack their food and keep the Wicked Wolf alive. Okay, so they're going to do that with the Spitter, and they're just going to take the three from the champion. Well, then. 
An unfortunate That's pretty close to dying. Oh, add a green mana first with your land if you're going to sack it. You can use it on the goose or something. Add a green mana first. No, I mean, they're not necessarily just dead because of, like, Gilded Goose. You know, being able, like, they could have made a food and gained life with that and stuff. They weren't necessarily just dead. Now, I mean, they're looking kind of dead. That was a great draw. That draw kills them. Right? Yeah, that draw should kill him. I don't see any way they survive this because of the Midnight Reaper. Yeah, just Gilded. Yeah, that's how they would have gained life: is Gilded Goose making food and sacking food. Yeah, Kendis, I, I can't really tell whenever the lag happens on my end. They're saying, like, I, you need play-by-play. -play. I, I don't know exactly when. It happens a lot worse for y'all than it does for me. On my, It doesn't... It's not very too bad most of the time on my end. It's a lot worse on y'all's end. Glass casket... All right, I will, I'll go ahead and reset because, you know, we played seven games here. So I'll reset. We'll play two more. We're going to play two more with Monoret here. We're going to play nine, nine games. Because, like, on, on my end, I'm just continue, continuing to play the game. But yeah, we'll have the new new computer in two days. We got today and tomorrow are the last streams with this computer. And then Tuesday I'll be building. <sighs> well, this, this hand has a plan. I don't know if it's a good plan. Of If we're on the play, I'd like this plan a lot more, but we're on the draw. So, like, we have to attack with Spitter on turn two on the draw. We'll keep it for science, but I think this may be a mulligan. Because it's not like turn two, like, even if we do this, like, I don't want to, like, double light up the stage on turn two, because that's just going to be too many cards that we can't play. It's like, we want to only play, like, one light up a stage a turn early, basically. Ugh, I wish I could have bone crushed that. I wish I would have had my land in play, but obviously I don't want to have my land in play because of the light of the stage. That's rough. Mm. Ugh. Yep, that cost us. Because, yeah, if I, if I could have just Bone Crushered my own creature like we've done before, it keeps them from getting their, their Bone Crusher out. And life's a lot better. But obviously, yeah, that's just a really, really tough spot. Because obviously I don't want to play my land first because of life at the stage. 
So that was just the worst things that could happen. And so, all right, so next time on the draw, Mulligan this hand. I kept it for science. I thought it was probably a mulligan. Turns out it should have been a mulligan the whole time. So I'm expecting just these things to get countered. Not countered. All right, makes sense. Basically countered, same thing. They get another card though. Imagine this game with the Bone Crusher Giant not being here. You know, like us still at 20. If I would have just played my land first. It's not necessarily, it wasn't really a mistake not to play my land first, but that decision of not playing my land first cost me that game. At least. And it didn't, it, was, it wasn't like we automatically won if, if I would have, but we would have had a, a whole lot better chance. Hey, Necrolepsy, no problem. Yeah, sub battle stream was a lot of fun, though, yesterday. It's all up on YouTube, of course. So, yeah, okay, yeah, the reason why I didn't play the land first is because of this card that was in my hand, Light of the Stage, where if we would have dealt damage to our opponent, then... Um, we would have been able to play it for one mana in our second main phase. And then I could play the card I could play the top two cards in my library, and so if it was lands, I'd be able to play the land off of off of it. Um But still I could have just played I'd have another turn anyway, so I could have just Could have just played my land first and just cast the light at the stage and play an extra land over there. <laughs> well, we are playing best of one, but yeah, we we, lo we just lost that best of one game. Hmm. I would like to play the Steamkin here, but I gotta play both of these things, because otherwise I don't get them. Oh, in in the sub battle stream. Yeah, I lost. What is this thing? A seven six. Hmm.
We found all the lands we need last game. Yep, Lightning Strike was a big loss for the Red Decks for sure. That was a good one. Given the Steam deck, the Steam can deck lots of, lots of cards. It's risky. Do I want the Spawn of Mayhem to do one damage to both of us first before I Bone Crusher Giant it? This is the main question. And I think so. Oh, maybe not, honestly. Probably not, actually. Basically, because Ember Cleave is like how we're going to lose. And so I, I think that one point of damage could, could definitely be important against Ember Cleave. Good. No Ember Cleave. Okay. So let's see. Start with this thing. Alright, so it's probably lagging now. There we go. Hopefully the lag's gone. It kind of went through a little little bit there. I could tell. I didn't actually have lethal. I guess maybe I did with attackers. That was going to put them down to one. All right, runaway steamkin. Very good. That was an unfortunate hand for my opponent with the Stormfist Crusaders, because that's not a very good card in the matchup. What they needed to do when they played the Rotting Red, basically the Rotting Registrar couldn't stay back on defense. They had to attack each turn with it. Like, this is just not a game that they're going to be winning if they just kind of sit back. Um... Yeah, like that, that's just not a game that they're going to be winning. So they had to be attacking with their 7-6. Each turn and pressuring me like that. I'm not saying that they would have definitely won if they would have done that. But they would have had a lot better chance. That game, that was exactly what I wanted to, to happen, honestly. Because I have all the burn spells. Like, you know, I'm playing burn spells. They're not... Um, 
And if if the battlefield is just going to be a stall and it's just going to sit there, they can't win at all unless they draw Embercleave. And while I have all the time to draw all my burn spells and everything. So yeah, that was a matchup they needed to need to be attacking when they're 7-6. Yep, they're, they're Crusader. Oh, that's true. They're going to just die to the Crusader at the upkeep. That's true. That's true. But yeah, that, that's not a good matchup for Crusader whenever you're behind like that. You've got to be attacking with Crusaders and stuff because you can't, they can't stay alive um, on a stable board. Absolutely. Okay, so talking about our deck here, I honestly just really liked the choices. I liked how we had like the, the Bone Crusher Giants were just incredible. This this card in mono red looked really really good, um, and it was it's a big thing in the mirrors trying to get rid of their Bone Crusher Giants. Um, this card was awesome. Really liked Robber the Rich a whole lot. The one drops were were pretty good. Rimrock Knight was just fine. It wasn't amazing, but it was fine. I'm glad that we didn't draw a ton of them. Um, but yeah, it was just fine. Risk factor. I actually liked risk factor. Like other options that, you know, could have experimental frenzy in the main and everything, um, instead, but I honestly just liked the risk factor. I liked how, you know, put a lot of pressure on them and, you know, paired pretty, you know, paired just fine with Torbrand. I mean, Torbrand's just awesome. We did a good job of drawing our two Torbrands, to be honest. You know, there's only two in here, but we did a good job of drawing them. But yeah, I like Risk Factor. You don't have to worry about Enchantment Hate, destroying it, all that kind of stuff. Yeah, I think the Spitter is, is is just fine. I think it's probably the best, the next best one drop to play besides Fervent Champion. And you need these one drops for sure. And I think Spitter is probably the, the next best one to play. Spitter, like Torbrand makes Spitter a whole lot better, of course. Um, but yeah, it's not it's not anything special. But you need one drops. Um oh yeah. Yeah, playing Clackbridge Stroll against yeah Clackbridge Stroll against Cavalcade doesn't work too well. I like this more than Cavalcade though. I think this is just a more powerful deck and a better deck than playing uh, Mono Red Cavalcade. Uh, we I don't think I ever drew Skewer the Critics, and there's two Skewers and two Torbrands, but we drew the Torbrands all the time, and the Torbrands were awesome, and we never drew Skewer. So that's just something that happens. We drew Slaying Fire a couple of times, and it was really good. Um, anyway, so yeah, so talking about the sideboard, if we were playing this in best of three, I don't like Spyglass basically at all. I really don't. I, I don't think I would really want Spyglass against, like, I don't, like what, what, what would we want Spyglass against? I don't know. I don't like this card at all. I think that instead... I, I do like the Immolation Shamans. I think that I think this could work really well in best of three. I like this a lot against the Witches Oven decks. I like that you have just four of these, um, and I think this is the this is the thing to do against Cauldron Familiars, not Spyglass. I don't I don't want Spyglass there. And everything like all those decks inside like after sideboarding, they're all going to have removal that's going to kill Spyglass also. Like whether they're playing you know Vraska Golgari Queen or other stuff like they're all just gonna have ways to kill spyglass I, I don't i don't want that card but yeah immolation shaman's awesome a couple of lava coils is good i like like we need two mana removal that kills bone crusher giant in different matchups so that's definitely useful um i would probably want uh, i see how you have like the, the two frenzies i probably want more ways to go bigger after sideboard um against control decks that are that you know that they just overload their deck with like cry of the carnariums that kill your rimrock knight robber or steam kit like you know that they do that kind of stuff that they just really overload on like small creature removal i would want more that's 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 something that i'd want some more slots to i don't really like tybalt honestly i i don't think that there's that much life gain that it's worth it um but i want more ways against against those decks 
to go bigger. Just a second. Okay, never mind. I flew away. Um, as far as against, like, is it Flash against the Flash decks? I'm not sure really. And so, it's, okay, anyway, back to, like, what I was just saying. As far as that's concerned, um, you know, we want non-creatures. So things like three mana Chandra, um, Chandra Fire Artisan, I, which, by the way, I like Fire Artisan more. I, I probably want a couple Fire Artisans in the sideboard. Because I do like this card. Because this is also just good against, like, Simic decks and stuff that they're just going to only be able to attack to kill it. And so if they're attacking to kill it, they're taking a lot of damage. Like, just get Spyglass out of here. Hey, Blame. Thank you so much for the Twitch Prime sub. Welcome to the channel. Thank you, thank you. I'm not sure really how good Leyline of Combustion is. I've seen some people use it to some varying success. I don't know. Expansion is pretty cute if, if like flash decks do get pretty big. Expansion's pretty cute as like a way to counter their ionize. And and uh like you're you're never using the explosion part, but you just have expansion where you can also you know, you at at worst you can also expansion, copy your light at the stage, bone crusher, giant, shock, stuff like that. But you know, like they, they cast negate or ionize or things like that, and you you counter their counter spell. I've I've definitely used I've definitely played mono red and played expansions in the sideboard in mono red before for counter magic heavy decks. So that could be something to to try out. Fervent champion's the best one drop in the deck. Scorched bitter is the second best. That's something cute. Um, a mobilized district, I, I, th maybe. I, I don't know if you need. Yeah, I mean, if you have, if you have the sideboard, if you have the sideboard land, would a mobilized district be better than a mountain? No, probably not. I think I'd rather just have the mountain. For the sideboard land. Oh, war boss. War boss is pretty awesome. But it also just kind of dies to Cry of the Carnarium and all that kind of stuff, though, too. That's a very good sideboard card. Do you have enough sideboard against, like, the other aggro decks? I'm not sure. Maybe. But basically, I just don't want Spyglass whatsoever. And I, I do like Chandra. I do like Expansion. Those are some other options there. Um, Fry, of course, is pretty decent. Um, I could see this deck kind of struggling with the Simic Flash deck that's, like, flashing in Nightpack Ambusher and Frilled Mystics and, you know, things like that and Nissa and all that kind of stuff. You may be able to go underneath them. I'm just not sure. And I don't know exactly what would be the best sideboard cards for that, that deck, that matchup. That's one to definitely be. That's just a matchup to be thinking about whenever putting together sideboard cards. If there's anything that's good against um, night night pack ambusher, which I'm not sure if there is. I think electro dominance costs too much mana. I think that one costs too much mana. Not too interested there. Electro dominance is the card that's like a, it's a really good top tech. Um, yeah, rekindling phoenix rotated. Otherwise, that would be a good one because that that's that card's very good against. Um, so maybe a couple more slaying fires, honestly. Maybe actually slaying fire could just be like another sideboard card. Actually, like slaying fire. We'll play these instead of like Tybalt's. So I don't care about Tybalt at all. This is probably just good against Questing Beast and Nightpack Ambusher decks. So against both those kind of decks, you just play some Slaying Fires that you can have an instant speed thing that does four damage. And that's probably just a good card against Flash decks in general. Like they, you know, they tap out, 
to play a threat, you can also do four upstairs too. Um, but yeah, Electro Dominance is the kind of card that's like, it's kind of like Banefire was in the old old format where it's it's something that'd be really good to top deck whenever you have like six, seven, eight lands and it's like a super late game, then you want to draw it. But you don't want, ever want to have it in your opening hand or like your first 15 cards that you draw. You don't want any, you, like you, you don't want your first 15 cards that you draw to, to be Electro Dominance. So therefore you probably shouldn't put it in your deck. That's something to just kind of think about in, with decks in general like that. All right, but anyway, that's Mono Red Aggro. Really good record there, 7-2. and two. Uh, One of the losses also could have maybe been a win if I would have played differently, but I kept a really skeptical hand on Science, uh, and we were let down, so I would definitely mulligan it the next time. But fun deck to play and, and felt very powerful. So there we go. It's Mono Red Aggro and Best of One. Those of y'all watching on YouTube, uh, hit that like button over there. And of course, leave some comments. I'd appreciate both of those. But thanks for watching Mono Red Aggro, and I'll see you for the next video.